There's the master photographer in his studio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't like to see the whole hat in the shadow of it. Right. Oh, Jake, where'd we just come from? Uh, Steak Center. Uh, what'd you do? I went and talked to you the present dude. <laughs> then what's gonna happen? I'm gonna be an elder. When? Sunday, which is tomorrow. <laughs> uh, you knocked me out, buddy. <laughs> and now we're about two minutes away from the hole family gathering at Heidi and Aaron's new house, right? Yep. Well, we'll have to get their reaction next. Yep. Are you happy? I am. <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> Hey, cowboy! 
Will those uh, cut seal that in the short time? Oh. Hey. Man, oh man, you look good. How do you are talented? Thanks, Dad. She's got a hat. This is Cowboy and the pilot here. Hi. Hey, Dad, look at the little hats here. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Alright, back up. Gordon, I want to buzz. I go, what are you talking about? I want to buzz. 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 I want to buzz.
which uh, went from Newport, Virginia, to uh, Marseille, France. We picked up 5,000 troops in Marseille, France, the, the war was over. And, uh, and we, we were taken to the Manila in the Philippines. Went through the Panama Canal. A buddy of mine had a, had a brother who was pilot on the Panama Canal. And uh, we, we docked um, in, uh, on the Atlantic side, the old Cristobal something. And I, I was able to, to go on the full dock and talk to the, the pilot. And he said, well, you'll be going through the Panama Canal the next day. And uh, when you stop, I'll take you all over the Panama. So we went through the Panama Canal, and I was just a good seaman. I was in the after frozen that time, beautiful view, and, and uh, went through. And uh, we just slowed up, let the pilot, our pilot off. Kept right on going. I never did see the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we went to. Uh, uh, we went, and then we proceeded on to the Philippines. About we were about opposite opposite uh, Hawaii. Uh, close to the equator, but we never crossed the equator. Uh, and that's when they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, wasn't it? Hiroshima. And, uh, so then we proceeded on to to, uh, um, to uh, Manila, dropped the troops off, went back to, uh, we brought a, a load of, of personnel, army, back to, to San Francisco. And we made a, one more trip to, no, from there we made a, the, the war was over in Japan now. So we, we went up and went down the, uh, uh, what was it, what was it, Fallen, Oregon. Columbia. Columbia River. Picked up 5,000 civilians who were in the internment camps, men, women, and children. Took them to Yokohama, which is not too far from Tokyo. And we uh, we dropped them off. Going over, there was waves about 60 feet high. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you get and, seasick? Uh, no. No. And um, when I lived on there against the base, I was always on the water and you see them sailboats and canoeing. Uh, when I was a boy scout, I I paddled from Browns of Ireland to, to Camp Yago, which is 100 miles, and did that twice for the place down. So uh, we made uh, two trips to Japan, and then we, uh, the, the war was over, so we uh, get off the ship. And we, they sent us by train up to uh, Seattle. We get on a, a, a merchant steamer, the SS C, which is going to take us up to ADAC get on a, a Coast Guard weather patrol ship. We got as far as the catch can, stayed there for two weeks, and we found out that the ship we were supposed to run was damaged in a tidal wave. And so that was scrapped, so we came back to Seattle. And that's what I tell them some of the weeks. We stayed there for two weeks in the Coast Guard station before we went back to Syracuse. And we had uh, steak every night and out of five. <laughs> So we uh, we get back to uh, to Syracuse, and uh, and I was dating everybody in Eastwood except Ellen. <laughs> and finally I had a date for her. So uh, then I was going to uh, Syracuse University, and uh, so. Uh, I was on the, the football team. I was recommended by the coach in Syracuse uh, Berlin to be on the, to go on. So I was on the football team. I had a uniform and everything. And there was practice uh, morning, noon, and night every day. And uh, then on, I think it was 4th of July, no, Labor, Day. Labor Day, I had a date with Apple. And uh, I, oh, they won't have practice then. And they did. So I turned my uniform. 
best thing that ever happened to me. So uh, I get out of there and I work. You weren't the Teamsters that? No, oh, yeah. You had, didn't you have a security man outside the house? Oh, yeah. And, and I had a security man right outside the house. Was, that's, when, that's when the mob ran the Teamsters, right? Yes, oh, yeah. So they, they, they come after you. Yeah. So I had a, our night guards stay right outside our house all the time wow. after that happened. So we were going to get out of there. Then I worked for, for um, a small contractor for about... Uh, uh, he used to take us to Syracuse football game. Yeah. Used to go to the football game, go to his house and eat. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then, um, um, Santero, is a big construction company there, they made me an offer. I couldn't do this, so I went to work for them. And, um, doing highway work and malls and extending the runways at an airport. And uh, then they ran out of work in this area. It was kind of a recession. And so they were, they were bidding. I, I, was, um, vice, I was vice president and chief estimator for this company. And they sent me to Florida to bid jobs. That's the only place in the country that parents bid it there was any work for big construction companies. So I did a couple of jobs, school job, and, and then they had a, a big a big highway job, made $15 million. And they, they sent a lot of people down that I didn't know to, to work for me on the estimates. We were in a we were in a, a house, a ranch house for an office. We're taking doors off doors off the, the hinges, put them on saws for, for tables, one telephone company, one line company. To make a long story short, uh, we, uh, we were a little bit around $50,000, uh, but uh, some way we made a mistake on, on, on the bid. So everybody was, in, was later that we took the job, and, and then we lost the job. This was in 81 was the time that uh, President Reagan was shot. So um, I came back to, to Syracuse, and uh, at that time I was driving a big Cadillac, company Cadillac. came back to, to Syracuse, and, uh, and then I, I came in and uh, I was fired. Here I am, 55 years old, looking forward to slightly to retirement. And uh, and here I got fired. Him. So I lost all my pension, all my insurance, everything. Then we. Uh, and he didn't tell me, and I was working for the same company. Yeah. <laughs> and I went, and I saw his car wasn't at work one day, and I went over there for lunch, and I said, "What are you doing? You taking the rest of the week off?" He says, "No, I've been fired." I go, "What?" I said, "Well, that's my clear signal." I went. We'd been thinking about moving down here then, and I went in and I waited for Tony Santero to come in, and he came in late that morning. All morning I paced the engineering office, and he came in and I went right to his office right behind him, and I said, could I talk to you for a minute? He says, yeah. I said, in view of the way you've treated my father, I can't work here anymore. And he says, that's between your father and me, and I said, well, unfortunately, you think I would want to work here for 10 years and then you do the same thing to me? I quit, and he says, okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> after that, I worked for a small small contractor. And I think I, I, I was selling Cambridge diet formulas. <laughs> <laughs> we lost money in that too. <laughs> and, uh, we lost weight. We lost weight. We lost weight. So I had I had maybe seven different sources of income for about a year, and all of a sudden, they all dried up. Had nothing. Now all our savings are gone, everything's gone. And uh, I went into a very deep depression. Well, when you yeah. 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 Right. He was doing consulting, photography, yeah. diet, 
little bit of everything. So, you know, with the recession of the time, so it's not much fun. <laughs> Which I didn't know. Which I didn't know. So, uh, what year was this? This was 81. So, uh, I had to go to a psychiatrist. Dr. Rich, who my, uh, my priest recommended. And uh, if you're in a depression, there's nothing that you, it's, you have some kind of a chemical imbalance in your, in your brain. And um, like taking a photograph, I would take a photograph which I'd taken thousands, and I would change the setting, but you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't trust anything. It, 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 oh, it was, it was terrible. But uh, I had some kind of <coughs> antidepressant uh, pills or something. So it took about a couple of years, no, a couple of months, a couple of months to to, to out of it. And, uh, in all of them. In all of them. So if it wasn't for Ethel, here we came, people at church, I would have been like that. So, so that's when I, in 81, started my photography business. And uh, working for contractors, taking construction jobs, and uh, I must have been terrible. And, uh, and I did my first aerial. Somebody asked me for, for an aerial photograph of a sewage treatment plant in Watertown. <laughs> and the only That's a crappy job. <laughs> the only plane I could get, I didn't know, was a it was a Piper Piper something, I don't know what it was. But it was a low wing with a bubble on top. So they had to turn right upside down and I had to shoot through the glass and see some water reflection. That's the last time I was in the road. <laughs> so Gradually, it started building up. So I had asked him, would like to see this one at 8 and 10. Okay. Okay. To my priest. Gave me a check of $5,000. That's pretty. I put that money in the bank. Never touched it. Used it for security. And about four or five years later, I was able to uh, give that back to him with $3,000 interest. Interest in all 15%. So I repaid that. And we gradually kept going and, uh, and we get more and more customers and et cetera. And then in uh, 91, there was another big recession and for the customers that I had. And I have another impression. Uh, anyway. So since then, uh, we, we, we since. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I set a goal that I want to be uh, the best to part of these. It's in front of the bottom of my cars. And uh, so. So right now I have a lot of customers when I do monthly, monthly areas for them for progress. And I want to pop up the professional area for charges of America. And going to the conventions I've learned an awful lot. I remember the first one I went to, there was a, there was a, a there was one of the fellows at a computer. He asked me what my telephone number was in my zip code, my uh, area code, and typed it in, and here was Eastwood, where I live, right on the screen with a map by the whole home. And, and then, I, then I learned about, um, about uh, global position, um, where you can find out exactly where your location is by the satellite, and you can put the from the mapping program, you can put the, you can get the exact latitude or longitude where you want to go, and and you can fly directly to that point. And that helps. And um, about oh, two weeks ago, in Syracuse, they're having 
what they call the Death, uh, Destiny USA, which is a huge project. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. 